Wreck avoidances. Daring passes. Silly jumps. Oh my god, a drive through. The thrill of victory. And the occasional mishap. My sand crash. This is the DMLC Racing Channel. A new beginning with familiar faces. For the first time, Lionheart is going back to its roots. 18 races to determine who is the best and the most exciting form of auto racing on the planet. 200 mile an hour Indy cars, inches from disaster or glory. There can only be one inaugural champion whose name will be etched into the Lionheart history book. Find out next. The Lionheart Speedway Series presented by DMLC Racing Channel starts now. It's the home stretch for the inaugural Lionheart Speedway Series presented by the DMLC Racing Channel season. After several championship favorites floundered at Richmond, Alexis Newsom was able to not only win, but take the driver standings lead in a massive point swing. Now, with today transitioning to the final one and a half mile track of the 2021 campaign, the pressure is on. Can Matt Taylor bounce back after having three straight sub top 10 finishes? Can Barrett Rolfe find a way to score his first top five since mid-September? Can Robert Malachka III do the improbable and come back from missing five races, including the last event? Can Newsom hold on to her 18-point lead in the standings? All of that could be answered and more tonight. This is the pre-ultimate race of the season. The Fish Motors Kansas 200 presented by Espo Designs at iRacing's virtual Kansas Speedway. Hello everyone and welcome to Racebot TV and ESTV for coverage of the Lionheart Racing Series powered by HyperX. Makers of premier gaming gear like the legendary ultra comfortable cloud line of gaming headsets. Whatever you play, however you play, HyperX knows we're all gamers. For more information on HyperX products, visit HyperX.com and don't forget to use the promo code LINEHRT15 for 15% off orders. My name is Justin Prince. Along sound of the booth tonight is Andrew Kinsella, along with Arjuna Kanki Potty in the producer's seat. You can follow along with live topic scoring at racespot.tv forward slash indie to follow along with your favorite teams and drivers in the virtual world of motorsport. Let's dive straight into our Sim Experience countdown to green, as it's the home stretch of the season, Andrew. A couple races left to go, and then we crown a champion. The pressure is on for the next couple weeks. The season might be winding down, Justin, but the battle for the championship is heating up. First of all, we have Kansas here tonight, and it's going to be a very exciting race on the cards here, I believe. We've got a 1.5 mile track with a little bit of progressive banking and it makes the turns through here very easy to go two and three wide we're going to see some action all over the, this track and it's going to be very important for the championship contenders to avoid the carnage come out unscathed and rack up some huge points coming in for the finale in two weeks time at auto club because that one is going to be wild as well it's going to be very critical to be able to score valuable points before you reach that double points, triple crown finale. But as we mentioned, a massive swing in the points, Andrew. Alexis Newsom entering Richmond with the drops factored in, was trailing by about 9, 12 points to Matt Taylor. A couple of incidents later, a 10th place for Barrett Rolf, and Newsom now leads by 18. That is huge. It was such an impressive showing from Alexis Newsom last time out. She had the perfect combination of strategy, speed, and patience uh, at Richmond. And it was just a championship caliber drive. But 
Barrett Rolf, Matt Taylor, they're no slouches either. And look at just a little bit further down, Tony Shaw and, and Alexander Van de Sant. They are not out of this either, especially with the double points uh, uh, on cards at the finale. So any one of those top five drivers still has a shot at this. And this race tonight will be critical for all of their chances. Once again, those standings brought to you by the DBLC Racing Channel. Let's take a look at the HyperX team standings. Where that is also razor thin, Andrew. The Dreadwind Motorsports holds on to the advantage by under 100 points over factory backed. But don't look now, but Team Race vs. Red looks to try and move into second, just five points back of factory backed entering tonight with Team Race vs. Black in fourth. The only thing on Adrenaline Motorsports mind tonight has to be maximizing po points for both Tony Shaw and Joe Branch. Don't forget that they have lost Chris Stouffer. He's no longer a part of this series. So they are down one man uh, compared to the other teams that they're fighting. So especially when it comes to that double point finale, going in there with as big a margin as Adrenaline can, that is their big biggest and best hope to take home this championship. They got some stiff competition from Factory Vac and Race First. And keep in mind, it's there's still a chance hypothetically, but in our words, with two drivers, it's going to be tough to win the team title. Let's take a look at the rookie standings presented by Butt Kicker. And the majority of the front runners in the championship have been rookies. This class could be one we talk about for years to come, Andrew, as one of the best in series history in all of Lineheart competition. This has been one of the most impressive rookie classes, undoubtedly, in Lionheart history. Um, there have been a number of individual rookies who've come along and been very strong, but I don't think we've ever seen a, a class this deep and this strong for so long in the season. And a number of these drivers have also gone and started to join the uh, IndyCar series, the main one on Wednesday nights. But the likes of Alexis Noose and Barrett Rolfe and Matt Taylor right at the top of these standings, it just shows just how strong this rookie class is. And it's been so impressive to watch throughout this entire season. It's going to be interesting how big the impact will be down the line. But on that note, it's time to look at your series details presented by Minus 273, the premier name in carding gloves. Their additional lean gloves are super lightweight and durable, made of breathable poly spandex. With your cart or sim racer, Minus 273 gives you the control to reach victory lane. For more information on Minus 273's full line of gloves and apparel, that's Minus273.biz. And don't forget to also use the code Minus273. LHRS 15 for 15 percent off orders. So once more, we head off towards Kansas today, and you are the setup guru for Line Heart Racing Series competition. What would these drivers be feeling today in their custom fixed setups with the Delar DW12? So to start out the run here today, Justin, it's going to be pretty packed up. It's going to be packed together. There's going to be two and three wide action, but then as the run goes on, those front tires especially are going to start to give up on these drivers they're going to start moving up the track the bottom lane won't be quite as viable as we get later and later on into these runs and you're going to start seeing people trying to move up the track to, trying to find that clean air the pack's going to string out just a little bit so it's going to be all on these drivers here today to adapt to what the setup is giving them over the course of a, of a longer run and whoever can do that they're going to be the ones who come out on top here today going to be very testing these drivers for today here at this racetrack as keep in mind this racetrack has had some eventful moments when it comes to competition here as this is the fourth time the dw12 visits the sunflower state keep in mind the pole sitter has never entered victory lane here hyperx victory lane there have been two ties though for the pole andrew Two ties for the pole, and look at that closest margin of victory, just 0 .011 seconds that we saw back in Season 4 with Chris Stouffer taking the win just barely. Um, and so this is the type of track where it's not a matter of feet, it's a matter of inches that these drivers are dealing with, both in qualifying and in the race. So it's these guys are going to have to be like inch perfect today, and it's going to be an incredibly entertaining race to watch. And attrition hasn't reached its way completely towards double digits in the history of the DW12 era. Five is the most cautions in LIS history with this chassis, the least two in its time. But the lead changes, keep in mind, they can be substantial as seen there 30. We're back in season four of LIS competition with this Delara DW12. Now, for these drivers, Andrew, the challenge is going to be, as you mentioned, 
lot of pack together racing early on, but it's also going to be the challenge for the championship favorites. Can they perform when they need to today, especially in the case of Robert Belechka III? Because of Belechka III having so many missed races, and essentially a lot of his drops being zero points days, he needs to win out to have a shot for the finale. Absolutely. Malechka has got all all to do in front of him today, Justin. He's far back in the points, 98 points back. As much as 110, 115 points, depending on the drop weeks, are could be on play at Auto Club. So he's going to have to narrow down that gap. Similarly, I look at Joe Branch right in front of him in the standings on 78 points. He's going to have to do something to, to narrow the gap up towards uh, that that leading pack of, of drivers near the front of the standings. It's going to be incredibly important for both of those two to be inch perfect today, have run exactly the race that they need to and come out um, on the top of the podium here. Practice is now wrapping up here for tonight's action. Drivers will have five minutes to solo qualified laps. Charming their starting positions for tonight's action. In total tonight, 24 drivers have brought their cars to the racetrack, 23 expected to take the green flag, with one doing race control via sitting on top of the race car along in the paddock. But the drivers are starting to reach their way onto the racetrack for tonight's qualifying, Andrew. How do you qualify here properly here at Kansas, especially with the need to be able to get good track position as we've seen in the past in these races? Yeah, so what you're going to see here is... Um... The, the warm-up lap and lap one, they don't matter too much here. What you need to do is focus on getting lap two speed. So what you're going to see is that the drivers are going to take lap one. They're going to run pretty high up the track, although Nick DeGroote is staying pretty low here so far. If it were me, I'd be running second, maybe even third lane here, trying to maximize um, just how much uh, track that, that the cars have. And you can see now he's actually moved up into the, this third lane. Then he's going to come down, he's going to sweep down towards the inside, even take the apron here going on to the, his second lap. Transition back up is so important. It's pretty pretty calm transition, but he need to nail it and not scrub any speed. Stay as low as he can through one and two. Middle of the back stretch, just letting the car run out, come slowly back down towards three and four here, right on the bottom, and then keep it nice and tight and go right down onto the apron, and that's how you get through a qualifying lap at Kansas. So to group currently with the first completed times around for two completed, 25-6-1-4 is the current top mark. Of note, Matt Houston, he let his car roll down the whole front straightaway, then parked it just after the start and finish line, hence why he set a 31-9, so essentially he'll be the last driver in total times. But here is one driver who cannot afford a bad qualifying run again. Barrett Rolf qualifying thin in his Achilles heel from the drop of the green flag this season. And another big wobble coming out of turn four. It's the same story on a different day here, Justin, unfortunately, for Barrett Rolf. Just not quite the run that he needed right there. He, he got close, but that bobble can definitely have cost him, and especially with the margins as close as it is. As it is. It's not as bad as it could have been, as he is in, uh, I believe, second place right now on track, but we've still got a lot of drivers left here to qualify, so that bobble is probably going to cost Barrett Rolf, I'm guessing, between 5 and 10 positions, and this is a track where you just can't afford to have that happen, particularly with how close the racing is going to be for those first 5 and 10 laps. He's going to be right in that danger zone of potentially having something go wrong right around him. He's still holding on to third, keep in mind for now, but a lot of the drivers still have yet to reach the racetrack. Amongst them up to speed, Caleb Bensi is on the circuit. Xion, Shawan, Godso, Teed, Fowler are all starting off some of their qualifying runs. Also, Paul Jenkins is on his second lap as well around the circuit. If this sticks, Barrett Rolf would be very lucky, especially since his starting average this season, a 17.9. Jenkins, meanwhile, coming around, had a 16 flat, 26 flat rather to start off the first lap the second time around it is a 25 6 6 0 that moves him around christopher kreisky and company around dakota demand and company as well but justin look at the times that we're seeing on the on these charts right now for every driver that we've seen who's put in both laps fully um they're within 
half a tenth of a second of each other. These times are incredibly close, so the margins between being first and being near the back of the field are going to be so small here. Here comes an error driver making their way around the circuit. This is Tony Shawin. Needs a solid points run today, and how about that? A25, 583, the quickest out of anybody so far, with under a minute to go on the clock. But several heavy hitters are yet to take times. Robert Maletska, the third's in the middle of the infield. Alexander Van de Sen is trying to start his second lap right now. A couple other big hitters are still on circuit. It's right down to crunch time, and Alexander Van de Sand is another of these drivers that really needs to be right at the top of this field. He can't afford to be back in the pack today. He's got to be right up at the front, and he's looking really good so far, keeping a nice tight line through three and four. Coming down towards the end of his lap, let's see where he ends up here, Justin. And de Sand, a 25-609. That's good enough for the top five. For Van de Sen, who put himself in the championship conversation last round. But now qualifying has come to a conclusion. 20 drivers taking times. 23 set for your starting grid. Your butt kicker starting grid sees Tony Shawin on the pole tonight. A 25-583 sets the mark in front of the rest of the pack. For him, it's his first pole of the season alongside Chris Fowler. Matt Taylor looks to bounce back after some rough past few weeks, starting third alongside Charles Teed. Alex Guyon set a 25-607 to start in fifth with Alexander Van de Sen in sixth. Nick DeGroot starts in seventh today alongside Jeff Sheehan right behind them. Rounding up the top eight starting positions, Jeff Sheehan is mentioned with Trevor Malone in 9th, Matt Wagner in 10th, Joe Branch in 11th, and Caleb Bemsey. Team race versus Orange. Just five 100s off the pole. That's how tight the margins are is in 12. George Enzoto starts in 13th today with Barrett Rolfe after a bobble out of turn 4, qualifies 14th. One of his better starting positions of the year, believe it or not. Paul Jenkins starts in 15th, a tie with Dakota DeMaid on the timing pylon just about while Dean Maul starts 17th. Christopher Kresge is an 18th with a 25, triple six. Gary Gonsell starts off in 19th, and Matt Houston with a abysmal 31-9 rounds out the qualifying times. The drivers who did not set times, some big drivers, Robert Maletschka III, Alexis Newsome, and AJ Musselman will start caboose on the field tonight with Tyra Graff in race control. That's look top to bottom at your running order for tonight's action. Here from Kansas Speedway, these competitors get ready to roll out onto the racetrack. Let's take a look at your featured onboard cameras tonight. First, with the HyperX on board, it is Matt Houston. Whatever you play, however you play, HyperX knows we're all gamers, and HyperX is always ready to game. With the Graphics Esports on board, it's Jeff Xion. Graphics Esports, world-class design from the real world to virtual. Visit graphicsesports.com. And Chris Fowler has the Chris Fowler Racing on board. Join Chris Fowler on his sim racing journey through his live streams. Visit Fowler Racing on Twitch. That's looked at your featured onboard cameras. We have onboards on all the machines. Keep in mind throughout the field tonight. As we get ready to go racing, the distance 133 laps on the board, 85% field limit. Drivers expected to have about 39 laps max on the field run, Andrew. Yeah, and it's going to make the fuel strategy very interesting, but one thing that I really am puzzled by is the strategy here from Factory Backed. Robert Malachka and Alexis Newsom both electing not to set times here. This is going to be very interesting to watch them, whether they are trying to do a, a sort of galaxy brain fuel run here, or whether this is just some, some strategy to, to try and stay out of trouble early here, Justin. And now the true test for some of these drivers is about to come up. Competition, commitment, excitement. This is Lionheart, and this is the start of the Fish Motors Kansas 200, presented by Espo Designs. The pre-ultimate race of the season is underway from Kansas City.
And a great start up towards the front, but Tony Schauen side by side as he leads the first lap. Chris Fowler wants to find a way to lead the second on forward. Charles Teed on the bottom, two by two, several deep, Andrew. Excellent start for all these drivers. Really clean, nice, orderly start here so far. It'll be interesting to see as we ramp up here whether or not uh, these drivers are going to be going uh, more aggressive and who's going to be aggressive and who's just going to be really patient here. I think that these next few laps are going to be key to see uh, what everyone's intentions are in this race. Now single file is Tony showing up towards the front. It looks like it seems early on at least, Andrew, the intentions are stick to the white line at least in the corners. That's been at least the play of notice for a couple drivers able to gain some spots by finding a hole at that bottom groove at least for the corner. Oh, as we see, I think that was oh. Dean Maul in the wall. Dean Maul's up in the wall. Down into turn one, no caution, we stay green. The 23 machine with significant damage. We keep on rumbling and rolling, all while Tony Shallon continues to lead. Here's a look at the replay. And Sorry. hearing over the radio, Andrew, a drive through penalty for the car number two, Gary Godso from this. Yeah, Gary just comes up the track. I don't think he realized that Dean was there, and um, that's just something that can't happen at a speedway race like this. Um, and, and unfortunately for uh, for Dean Mall, that is going to be uh, day done very early on in this race, I think. He might be able to repair it, but his car will be nowhere near competitive with how much damage that he suffered there. Unfortunate for Dean Mall there. So once again, Dean Mall now down for damage. Here that may have been Paul Jenkins that was the actual contact. So they may that may have to be looked at once more potentially on who that fault will be towards indeed. Tony Shallon currently holding on meanwhile in front of Charles T for now. Gary Gotso is serving the penalty now this time by. So an intriguing start to this one, Andrew, with a bit of contact, but in turn... Guess what happened as a result of that? 18th on back, which involves the drivers who didn't put in a time. They've now lost the pack. Yeah, really not the start that either Robert Malechko or uh, Alexis Newsom really needed here. Uh, unfortunate start, I think, that that incident really has fractured this field. So it looks like that they're just sort of swap drafting at this point, trying to find a way to get back up but there well over a second and a half back of Christopher Kresge, who is that last car in that lead train. So there, there's some work to be done for sure from Alexis New Newsom and Robert Malechka III to get back into this, and they need to get back in sooner rather than later in this race, Justin. Take a look at the live points as they run. Keep in mind, Newsom currently would hold on, but barely. And guess what? If Tony Shallon holds on up, towards the front he's in a good spot but not for now Charles Teed rips away the bottom went nearly to the apron there Andrew to take away the race lead for the first lead change of the night a really aggressive move from Charles Teed but he really wanted to, to lead that race and you could tell um, Tony Shallon though does not want to let this go he's got another a couple of hungry cars and Nick DeGroote and Chris Fowler right behind him as well it looks like um, of the championship contenders, Tony Shawn is really trying to sort of dominate this race from the front, but we've got a number of other championship contenders, such as Alexander Van Sant, Matt Taylor. They're being a little bit more patient, just sort of staying single file in line just behind this three-wide almost battle for the lead now. Once them, Chris Fowler with the Chris Fowler racing on board. And the grip levels are starting to go away a little bit. It's not as easy to stay side by side. Already about a quarter of the way through the fuel run here. Yeah, the tires are starting to go off just a little bit. It's not bad for the car in front or if you can get a little bit of clean air. But without that clean air, the tires are just going away a little bit. Um, and as you said, it, they'll keep going away a little bit more and a little bit more. Um, and you're going to have to... Um, really start to work that throttle especially as you're back in the pack of back where joe branch and barrett rolf are right now george and Zaldo, those types of cars they're going to have to start working the throttle more and more as the, as the stint wears on and it's going to be very key but it does look like i might uh draw your attention to justin that alexis newsom and robert malechka the third they're doing a great job and they are actually getting their way back into the fight here 
and they could potentially be getting just a sniff of this lead pack draft very, very soon. Here's the thing, though. We've got clarification on the reason Godso got the penalty. It wasn't for the incident referred to with Dean Mole. It was because he backed up into Robert Malachka the third's front wing on the starting grid, Andrew. And guess who's got damage from that? The 91 of Robert Malachka the third is struggling as a result of that at the back of the pack. Well, that, that certainly explains a number of things that have gone on with just how far back they went. And you can see that damage on that left side front end plate there on the car of Robert Malachka the third. But I must say he's doing a great job of staying with the pack here. So. For Robert Malechka, he might not even be able to see that he's damaged. I'm sure he can feel that he's damaged because his car just isn't handling the way that he's hoping it will. But the good news for Robert Malechka, if there is some, is that those wings are fully repairable. So he will be able to, on his first stop, take some uh, repairs and get back into the race fully healed with, with no penalty. So um, it doesn't look, appear that he has any other damage. So that's definitely a positive for Robert Malechka in the third. The thing is, with that time you fix the wing with, is it's about five plus seconds in the pit lane extra, which could be critical with how everyone else is separated by three seconds currently on the racetrack. We look towards the front, meanwhile, Alex Guyon, looking very solid so far, had a very quick time in qualifying. A few of the drivers have mentioned he's shown good improvement, but look who's charging. Barrett Rolf, he's in the top 10, almost in the top five all of a sudden. But we've never seen Barrett Rolf charge through the field before, have we, Justin? No, um, uh, <laughs> Bar Barrett is known for doing this, and we know that he's an aggressive driver, especially early on in the race. He's doing everything he can to take advantage of these fresh tires and overcome that mistake that he made in qualifying, and he's done a great job so far. But we've got a battle for the lead now. Tony Schellen's already taken it back from Charles T, but a new challenger's approached. His name is Nick DeGroote. And DeGru, not willing to take it low quite yet, Andrew. This time trying it up top. Now trying to dive it off the corner behind the banking. Not able to get the run he's looking for with the arrow wash. Yeah, these are such thin margins here. Nick DeGru right on the back of Tony Shawin in the one. And Tony doesn't really want to go down on the, onto that inside lane either. So he's running that second or third lane. Nick DeGru wants to make him go down a little bit more, but Tony just does not like it down there and Chris Fowler now looking on the inside as well so Shawin is actually having to defend from two uh, different lines momentarily and th the hard thing for Shawin is that every time he defends one driver the other driver can get a run so he's really having to drive a lot with his mirrors here um, and, and these drivers I'm sure are anxious to try and get around Tony and get into that clean air because it's going to make a huge difference here as these tires fall off and, and you can see that uh, really coming into effect now. Look who's getting the run up towards the front though. Nick DeGroote has just led this lap, Andrew. He got a better run on the top. It almost looked like that the 31 tried to pinch him up towards the wall for a moment there. All while they fight hard for third still. Barrett Rolf has caught up to this group, keep in mind, as Chris Fowler tries to give it slight late arc as he dives to the bottom. Can't slide it up. Yeah, the slide job just doesn't quite work here. You have to have a huge run in order to make it work because you can carry so much momentum on the outside. The banking here is slightly progressive. It's not a it's not really hugely progressive, but there is a little bit more banking on the top of this track than on the bottom of the track. So um, what you're seeing is that outside lane can really keep their momentum going and that's where Barrett Rolf right now is really showing some uh, dominance here early as he's really making that outside work and he's even trying to do it on Charles Teed who himself is running that second and third lane right now. Some great racing here so far side by side for the lead side by side with a couple different cars involved in the Hornets Nets for third. Charles T now up to that third position as near contact is a 33. Trying to block around Fowler. Van de Sant can't take advantage of the 97. All while the leaders are still side by side in front. Now it's the matter of somebody's got to complete a pass here. And no one seems to be able to clear one another here. Compared to some of the others, this is much different where it's been arrow wash that has been a big factor by this point. Yeah, this track is so momentum-based. Like, e even the arrow wash that you get, because there's 
pretty much always a car in both lanes in front of you. You really don't get the same um, the same benefit to running these different lanes. So the, the most important thing is to try and find that clean air, find a place that your car works, but also make sure that you're not making moves that are going to destroy your momentum because that momentum is really what's going to make sure that you get these moves done is you really need to have a proper good run on the cars in front of you in order to try and get clear in one set of corners otherwise you just find yourself running side by side like both our leaders and our third place battle are doing right now here's the live points in with all the quick shuffling even with Shaolin up towards the front and actually breaking away because of Barrett Rolf's charge he is currently the technical points leader by only one point over Alexis Newsom, who is in 14th place. But a lot can change from here on out, especially with drivers like Matt Taylor trying to have their best runs in about a month plus. Back to that side-by-side -side up towards the front. Tony Shawin and Nick DeGroote continue to trade laps each time around on who leads it. Yeah, they're going side by side here and neither wants to let the other one lead the laps here. I think Nick DeGroote is really trying to, to get to the front and sort of help his teammate Alexis and, and to a lesser extent Robert Malechka in the championship by trying to lead the laps and, and trying to make sure that Tony doesn't. Meanwhile, Tony is trying to do everything he can to just stay out front. I think that's where he's going to be the most comfortable in this race is trying to lead this from the front and make sure that he's not back in this battle that as he's, we watch on board with uh, Alexis Newsom with Joe Branch and George Anzaldo. You can see it's so hard for Alexis to find that clean air, to find that racing room, to try and work her way forward. We know that she's a fast driver, but right now there's just not a lot that she can do to get forward in this race. And here's an interesting play. George Anzaldo over the radio has just called. He plans to come on down, so something's going on with George Anzaldo. We're not even at lap 30 yet, so what's going on here, Andrew? It's a really interesting play. So what George is doing, I think, is he's counting backwards a little bit. So he's seen that we haven't really had a, a yellow flag yet in this race. And because of that, he's thinking, maybe if I if he can get out in his own clean air, because right now they're going a fair bit slower than, than what they qualified at and and um, what their, their best lap of the race is so far. So... I think what he's trying to do is he's trying to count backwards from the end and say, I'm just going to run full fuel loads from here, trying to get some undercuts and get some positions that way. We'll see if that plays out well. And Zotto's completed his service with 8.5 second stop. Matt Taylor now, you see, back into fourth position. Barrett Rolf, this has been an incredible drive to emphasize. Meanwhile, behind them, some incredible fighting still for sixth position. And these two have gone backwards now with some of the other drivers charging. Both Teed and Fowler have lost two and five spots respectively as now they're falling back to the Hornet's Nest behind them. Yeah, I think Teed and Fowler have just worn out their tires just a little bit too much. They were going at, it, at each other so hard and they were never quite able to get into that clean air that you see the likes of Tony Shaw and Nick DeGroote taking advantage of. So the end result is that these guys have really sort of burned through their tires and another one that I'd be worried about is probably Barrett Rolf as well ju with just how aggressive he's being. Meanwhile at the front we've got some close action Nick Groot and Tony Schauen are trading spots again. We've got action all over the circuit Justin. This song coming up to 100 laps to go already in this one. That's those charging ahead. That's Dakota Demade you see now in 14th amongst the big pack. Alex Newsome is up to 12th up 10 positions in the 63. Really strong drive from Alexis Newsom so far. She's doing exactly what she needs to do. She fell behind early, had that second gap back to the pack, and now she's caught back up. She's working her way steadily forward. She's not taking too many risks, which is really, really important. So this has been a strong drive so far from Alexis Newsom. Um, very impressive so far. And I want to draw your attention to, you mentioned 100 laps ago, we are quickly, quickly closing in on first pit stops right now. My, the race lead is starting to swap, but not side-by-side side anymore. Tony Shawin's taking it back out of turn two. Barrett Rolf, you mentioned his tires have also slipped back to fifth position. So a lot of the battling now coming into play with the pit window within those couple laps. Want to take the quick time while this is going on to mention the potential news coming towards next season two. Van Dessen could be a month. Some of the big movers 
in shakers in the team changes potentially andrew potentially someone to work with you in the future yeah so uh it looks like alex is probably going to be joining adrenaline motorsports next year and we're really excited to have him um obviously he's a very strong driver doing a great job in this race so far and uh you can see one of the, one of his strengths, and this is really coming through right now. Is his one of his strengths is really taking care of the car. Oh, doing a good job as Nick De Groot brushes the wall coming out of two. I think De Groot was De Groot was in the wall, and I don't know if he has damage. I think he does have a little bit of damage here, Justin. He's crushed the side pod. There is damage now to the right side of the factory back machine, and Tony Shallon is now up to the lead. Nick DeGroote indeed knocked down the wall, and this is a mistake you can make a lot in a lot of different types of cars here, Andrew. Out of turn two, that safer barrier can catch you and grab you. Absolutely, and unfortunately for Nick DeGroote, this is a mistake that he's made more often than not this year. He just gets a little bit low, touches the white line, and you can see the front end just takes off. He does clear Shaun, and, and Shaun is able to avoid him, but he doesn't avoid uh, the the outside wall there, and it's going to be an uphill battle for the rest of this race for Nick DeGroot. Pit calls over the radio. Tony Shawin expected to come this time. Matt Taylor is now the leader as he is flying. But now the pit window's open. Van Descent following suit as both of them lock it on down to the pit lane, and Van Descent oh, spins no. it. Van Descent nearly into the wall. A big mistake for the 97 as he still can't get it straight. Disastrous pit in for Alex Van Sand. He had been doing such a strong job throughout this race. That's going to cost him a good three or four seconds here, Justin. And that's going to put him right back on the back foot. He just locks up the brakes coming in to pit lane. I think he managed to keep it off the wall. No damage, but it's going to cost him a lot of time here. Matt Taylor just pit this time. Nick DeGroote is back up to the race lead. He's coming this time by. At the race off the pit lane. He's Tony Shallon. Munzo's coming off quickly off the lane just in front of Chris Fowler. It was an 8.7 for Tony Shallon in the pit lane as DeGroote. Really backing on down Barrett Rolf, really stretching this fuel run here. Yeah, I think that I do like this play of stretching this fuel run as far as you can go. Basically, what, what that means is I don't think that they'll be able to get all the way to cutting out a stop, but what it will allow them to do is take a shorter stop on, on that last pit stop, run with a lighter car, especially on the older tire or on the newer tires at the end of the race. It's going to be very important to have that extra few laps. So I like the Look play at here. Look at that. He also jumped in front of those two as well. He's, Matt Taylor is now the net leader. He is the leader for now, but it'll be interesting to see because Shallon is well within his draft range right now. So I think that um, what's going to happen is Shallon is going to drive by. But the big story here is look who is right beside uh, Tony Shallon and Chris Fowler here. That is George Anzalda. Remember, he came in uh, nearly uh, 15 laps ago now. And, oh, trouble uh, in the pit oh, lane. No. Alexis Newsom has just punted a car. Joe Branch has been spun by the points leader. And that has ramifications for the team title as well as Joe Branch to the commitment cone. It's so, being reviewed right now by race control, but my goodness, that is not what you want to see if you're the championship leader or in a team fight like Joe Branch. Yeah, absolutely not. It, it looks like Alexis just comes in a little hot here and, and right into the back of Joe Branch. Um... Unfortunate for, for Joe. I don't think he did anything wrong. I think Alexis just comes in again a little too hot. Touches. I, I don't think that there's any damage on either of the two cars. Um, I think they were able to get away with it, but um, definitely big championship implications, not only for our championship leader, Alexis Newsom, but also, as you mentioned, Adrenaline Motorsports and that team championship as well. And this will have ramifications for the championship. Alexis Newsom, drive through penalty over the radio. Newsom, the points leader, with a huge penalty in the pre ultimate race of the season, will take her out of the contention. As the top four now drafting together, it's Taylor Fowler, Shawin, and Enzoto up towards the front. But absolutely huge, the ramifications now, Andrew. This is huge for Alexis Newsom, particularly with how clean this race has been so far. It is. Like, because there's been so little attrition, because there's been so, um, 
so few cautions, in fact, no cautions so far. She needs one in order to get back into this field and into this fight somehow. Um, other than that, this is basically going to be a write-off for Alexis Newsom in terms of having any sort of decent finish. So huge implications there from that one small incident on, on pit entry there. And Newsom has just pulled on down and look at the damage. Newsom is back to third now with the drops factor. Taylor is now the current points leader. And this would be absolutely huge for Taylor's sake because for Matt Taylor, the past three rounds have been horrific. He was good at Richmond until a big crash. And now this would be one of the bigger swings in a while back towards his way. Keep in mind the max, about 126 points. Next race for the double points around 126, 128. That is true, but there's also the drop weeks to consider. So no matter what, um, it'll probably be closer to, depending on which driver it is, it'll be around one, uh, 100 to one, 110 points on offer, depending on which driver it is and which drop week to consider. Um, it looks like we do have some fuel strategy going on. Barrett Rolf, who we saw charge through the field earlier, Justin, He's now back with Trevor Malone and Nick DeGroote, and he's sort of just staying back here and trying to save some fuel. They've dropped two seconds back off the lead pack with um, the leading foursome of Matt Taylor, Chris Fowler, Tony Schaun, and George Anzaldo. So I think we might be seeing a little bit of strategy racing here after that aggressive drive to the front. Rolf is just sitting back there and waiting. Yeah, especially after how far he burned up the tires. He was amongst some of the farthest running stints last run. Here's the battle meanwhile for 8th. This is Bensi and Guyon fighting for the spot. These drivers lost a bit of time in the pit lane after everyone was bunched up before. They're now nearly 4 or 5 seconds behind Taylor. Yeah, not what these drivers were hoping for, but they do seem to be working well together, so they do have a shot at potentially getting back even, even if they can get back onto the draft of uh, of the likes of, of Barrett Rolf and Nick DeGroote. But back here is a little bit of a hornet's nest that we got going on here. Charles Teed, Matt Wagner, Jeff Young, AJ Musman, and just in front of them is Alexander Vandesant. Of course, he made that mistake on pit road as well, um, coming down on the pit lane and had that spin. And it's cost him seven seconds compared to the lead. So huge mistake uh, for Alexander Vandesant. Um, and he's probably hoping here that someone like maybe Charles Teed can uh, maybe start cooperating with him a little bit and hopefully bring himself back in towards uh, the likes of Caleb Bensi and Alex Gouy on it and make up some positions that way. But there's got to be some cooperation going on here if Alexander Vandesant wants to factor back into this race again. Might need a little luck on top of that too with how this is faring out. Meanwhile, the foursome's become a threesome. George Soto has fallen about a second back of the top three. Taylor still holds on with Chris Fowler and Tony Shawin right on behind, but they are reaching traffic. See that spec up the road? That's Gary Godso, who had that penalty for backing into Robert Blatchka, the third's car off the start. Yeah, and that, that uh, gap to George Anzaldo, that really shows you what um, the older tires are like, because um, he just cannot stay with this leading threesome um, on his 10-lap uh, 12 lap older tires um, so this is definitely one of those danger zones for Matt Taylor so he's been in the lead now for a good seven or eight laps and he's just been sort of cruising around so it's very important here as you come up on these lap cars that you factor in that arrow wash that you're about to receive uh, when you get close to them so we've already seen that one of our uh, leaders earlier today in Nick DeGroote he's brushed the wall because he underestimated just how much understeer this car can have so well, it, look at this. it'll be very important. Here comes Tony Shawn with a big move on the inside. He got a huge bit of slipstream, Andrew, down the front stretch. And now Tony Shawn swaps his way up to second spot. Fowler wants the spot back. Now it's staggered three wide. Stays two wide now for the lead. Tony Shawn starting to find something to take away the point. Yeah, I think Tony was saving a little bit of fuel, and now he's decided that he wants that lead back, and that, that's where he's been most comfortable throughout this race. I think that, again, this is a situation where Tony just wants to lead this race. He knows that there's probably not going to be much in it in terms of strategy here, at, at least at this point. So um, really, really close there. Uh, um, really close driving between these two championship contenders in Matt Taylor and Tony Shawn, and neither want to give up the lead of the race, but I think Tony's got it for him. 
Tony does. Matt Taylor not making it easy though, trying to keep to the very edge of the back tire. Just about does and does keep it side by side. A bit of contact. Shawin and Taylor nearly hit side pod to side pod. They keep on going at full speed though. That could have been big with Eddie more closer to the right from Shawin's side. Oh, that was so close. Very nervous moments for both of these drivers. Neither of them can afford to be racing that close this early on in the race, if I'm going to be quite honest here, Justin. I think that um, Matt Taylor and Tony Shawin, they both need to calm down just a little bit and realize, especially with what's happened to Alexis Newsom here, um, this is their opportunity. And if they throw it away just fighting amongst themselves this early on in the race, um, it, they can't afford to let that happen with this few races left to go in the season. Yeah, we're trying to push hard, but as this goes on, we quickly approach the halfway mark in this one. You're watching RaceBot TV and ESTV for coverage of the Lionheart Speedway Series presented by the DMLC Racing Channel. More coverage of the Fish Motors Kansas 200 is coming up after this. Wreck avoidances. Oh, Daring passes. Silly jumps. Oh my god, a drive through. The thrill of victory. Yeah. And the occasional mishap. My sin crap. This is the DMLC Racing Channel. Welcome back to RaceBot TV and ESTV's coverage of the Lionheart Speedway Series. Presented by the DMLC Racing Channel and the Fish Motors Kansas 200 for my racing's virtuals Kansas Speedway in Kansas City, Kansas. Justin Prince, Andrew Kinsella with you with a producer on J Aunt Juna Kanky Potty with live timing and scoring available at racebot.tv for slash timing. Flash to I Indy in their direction. The Indy cars, meanwhile, are having a flying affair. So far, no caution flags, but plenty of action to talk about. The top three, they're squabbling. Other drivers, they're fighting hard to prevent significant contact. Four on back is closing, especially with how hard they're battling. Yeah, they've been going back and forth um, side by side throughout that commercial break there, Justin. And it is no showing no signs of letting up and you're completely correct they are letting back in fourth fifth and sixth uh back in as we see alexander vandesant he is the first to, to blink here and he is coming down on a pit road here 
So still hard racing for the lead, but Van de Sand trying to mix things up, and it's not a surprise with the troubles from the last pit entry to see the 97 switching up. George Anzoto in for his scheduled stop as well this time, all while Shawin continuing to defend well. But at this point, it looks like the pit strategy is going to be absolutely huge for which driver comes away with this one because it's around that equalization point where it's a dogfight until the final eight laps of the run just about. Yes, and I do like this play from Alexander Van Sant. I think that this was really his only shot at getting back up into this fight. He really saw what happened with George Anzaldo and how he was able to uh, leapfrog himself from, from that battle in that 15th or 16th position all the way up to the lead of the race through that one pit cycle. So really because of that mistake on that first pit cycle for Van Sant, this is his shot to get back in the, the race. It'll put him on the back foot when it comes to the final stint. But he has to be up at the front in order for that to make any difference one way or the other. So I do like this play from the 97. Of no, you see with the live points, things are tied up between two drivers, the 33 and the 63. George Enzotto now has been passed by Newsom because Enzotto had a 48.8, meaning speeding. Unfortunately for Enzotto, his strategy has now gone bust. All while more have pit. Chris Fowler has ducked in for the lead pack this time by. So... The window's actively open, coming to 60 to go, and it looks like the play for some may be split at 30 and 30 to the end. Yeah, I think that they are trying to split it down the middle here, and it could be a good play again for the likes of Chris Fowler, uh, but Matt Taylor is looking like he's going to cover here as well, so some of these drivers are going long, but some of them are figuring that we, we've seen how powerful that undercut was from George Enzaldo the first time. We can't let that happen, so... It'll be interesting to see which strategy ends up coming um, out in the long run here, whether whether it's this short pit stop now or whether it's a short pit stop at the end that comes out on top. You know what I noticed there, though, Andrew? Trevor Lowden just about got to the back end of Taylor with his entry. Taylor was a bit more conservative. Malone charged hard to gain a ton of time for his stop. Taylor lights up the tires, and now Malone is within drafting distance of Taylor. Yeah, Malone is right there, and that's one of the things about being a championship contender is you got to pick and choose where you're going to be aggressive. And, and pit entry at Kansas is treacherous at the best of times, as we've seen a number of times already in this race. So I don't blame Matt Taylor for being just a little bit cautious as he came down on a pit lane there. You know what else, though? He still came out either way in front of who he needed to. That being Chris Fowler, but not by too much. Bauer with a big head of C, steam by 7 miles per hour. Taylor goes defensive while Tony Shawin is going long on the racetrack. Shawin's coming in this time by as they start battling for the net weights lead. How will this factor in for Tony Shawin's pit stop? Bauer trying to go arc it down from the top to the bottom. 56 to go this time. Really close stuff and it's going to be very interesting. The thing for Tony Shawin is he has to be within draft range of the, this leading to in order to make this going long strategy work for him. He's going to have to come out right on the back of Chris Fowler and Matt Taylor um, if, if this is going to work. If it does work, it's going to pay off for him, especially at the end of the race. He's going to have the better tires to make um, the passes and the moves that he needs to, but it's all dependent on how he gets off pit road right here. He's off the pit lane, but the race he needs to beat is near side by side behind him. Off a of turn two, look at the background. Fowler trying to take the high side, Taylor to the middle line. Here comes Tony Shawin onto the racetrack with a big checkup from Taylor. Fowler boxes him in. Fowler drives around the outside. Chris Fowler to the race lead. What a move from Chris Fowler there. Exactly what he needed to do. He saw Tony was staying low and he fell. Oh no! And a big crash. Caution is out for the first time and it involves two of the championship contenders. And the disastrous past few rounds continues for Taylor. Stunned silence over the radio. Stunned silence, I think, from you, Andrew, after this one. This yeah. has major implications. Yeah, I'm just trying to figure out what happened here, and it just looks like that there was a little bit of miscommunication between Shawn and Taylor 
Taylor came down slightly, Shawn came up slightly, and they just met in the middle. I don't think that I can put blame on either one of them, really. It's one of the things that can happen when cars are going side by side like that. But uh, yeah, it's just one of those things. And that puts both Tony Shawn and Matt Taylor in an incredibly awkward championship position um, going into the season finale. This was exactly what they didn't want to have happen, what they couldn't afford to have happen, what, what we were worried about happening when we, they were racing so hard earlier in the race. It's come to fruition now, and, and uh, unfortunate end to both of their days. Five drivers had yet to pit. Alex Guyon, Charles Teed, Jeff Sheon, Matt Wagner, Dakota DeMade, and guess what? They've got the fresh tires now in the field by nearly 10 full laps. These will all cycle to the front now. Everyone else was essentially pinned a lap down prior to the caution flag. So now it gets really intriguing. Keep in mind, Joe Branch had been, along with Alexis Newsom, the only two drivers outside of these grouping of cars who had not yet pit. Those were pinned lap down cars. And also hearing Matt Houston has had a technical issue where he had his wheel disconnect in the 66. So a lot has happened over the span of a couple minutes. Uh, that this race has been turned on its head, Justin. Um, as we quickly see the replay of Matt Houston going straight to the left, um, does successfully come to a stop, and it does look like he's avoided any damage here. But uh, um, yeah, th this race has just been turned on its head. We uh, have cars up front who have not been up front this entire race. We're going to have some wave arounds. Joe Branch, I think, is going to take a wave around even though he hasn't made a pit stop yet, and he will have to make a pit stop in the next three or four laps, so I'm sure he'll be uh, hoping for a very quick caution here in, in order to keep himself on the lead lap. Um, of course, he had that contact with Alexis Newsom uh, back um, on that first pit cycle. Um, this is uh, basically going to change everything in this race is the best way to put it. Um, the people who were at the front are now in the middle of the field. The people who were fighting for the championship up front are now out of the race. And the people who were near the back of the field are now at the front of the field. So I, wow. this race is, is completely different than we than everything we've saw, seen to date. Here's the live points for the entire top 10 and... It's pretty clear that a lot has changed as a result of that one within the entire top 10. Malechka the third with his bad luck today from the get-go is in seventh. That will take him essentially out of the championship contention pending a miracle. Newsom currently is cycled. It appears curling that towards the top. We'll have to see how things play out for sure since Newsom has to still hit. And then of course Barrett Rolfs in an okay spot in ninth currently on the racetrack. Taylor Likely to continue to plummet on down with Tony Shawin. In our words, this fight is going to get very much very boxing glovey for Auto Club Speedway for the finale. Taylor is officially out of the race with the DNF. Yeah, Taylor's done, and I suspect that Tony Shawin will also be done here. Um, it, uh, I believe that that will cost both of them roughly, like if they had finished three and four. That'll cost them roughly 30 points um, going down to where they are now with uh, the drop weeks as, as they are. So really, really costly stuff for both of them. Um, but meanwhile, the one thing, the one silver lining for both of them is that right now, uh, none of the championship contenders are doing particularly well as things stand right now. Probably the best position right now is Barrett Rolf and Alexander Van de Sant. Um, Alexis Newsom, I believe also is back going to be back on the lead lap but she like joe branch will need a very quick caution here in order yep. to stay on the lead lap because she is on 35 lap stint whereas everyone else is um clo closer to uh, a five or six lap stint here even longer 37 coming up to 38 branch is coming up to 40. some of those drivers have still not caught up to the back of the field yet with 50 to go based on the furthest drivers have been able to go it's still about seven laps outside the fuel window. So keep that in mind with 50 laps to go. It's Alex Guyon in control of the field. Green flag is out back and away from Kansas. Keep in mind, Guyon entered tonight with just five top tens the entire season, Andrew. 
this is a huge opportunity for him, especially since his only laps led were at Charlotte, where he had three. The huge opportunity really for all of the top five. None of them have had what you called consistently strong season so far but this is a huge opportunity but back in the field we are already seeing some really close racing as chris fowler is right on the back of uh i believe that was dakota demade there uh um, now he's all over paul jenkins though paul jenkins yeah paul jenkins horse to the middle line barrett rolf right on behind now three wide in the corner all while the leaders are starting to swap about with charles t now to the point Charles T with a slide job to take the race lead. Joe Branch is still holding up some drivers all while Jeff Sheehan is driving his way to the lead. The Graphics Esports on board. Oh no, Carol. we have some contact. Bear Rolf. And that involves several contenders. Trevor Malone is airborne. Caution is out. Matt Houston, several others involved. And now the championship battle takes another swing. Oh my word, what is going on in this race? Um, so, looked like uh, we had Joe Branch, who was going to have to come in fairly soon. He was slow on the old tires. Chris Fowler just gets into the back of him. Um, there's no other explanation. He just drives straight into the back of Joe Branch there and collects. That was Trevor Malone uh, um, and Barrett Rolf there. And... I think it was just an unfortunate situation where Fowler just didn't realize just how slow Branch would have to go in that arrow wash and just drive straight into the back of him. Uh, nothing that uh, Branch could have done differently and, and Barrett Rolf just along for the ride, wrong place, wrong time, and that's going to have huge championship implications as well. Suddenly, where it looked so disastrous for Alexis Newsom not 30 laps ago, it has all suddenly swung back into her favor. So now that puts a few drivers back in contention. Newsom and Brancher helped up a lot. Alex Guyon, the only driver in the entire field, I think, who does not realize he needed to pit because guess what? It's a fuel mileage race now. Yeah, it's going to be very, very tight. So Barrett Rolf is fortunately able damage. to drive it, drive it around, but he has a lot of damage, just as you say, Justin. Um, and the more interesting part will be if he has any suspension damage that will prevent him from... Um, getting back in the race um, so we'll have to see what how quickly he rejoins here but at the very least he's going to be at the back of the field if not uh, having s some significant disadvantage here um, it does look like uh, Joe Branch was able to get through that despite having that contact with Fowler to start that it does look like he's gotten through unscathed so that's another championship contender um, not doing not too bad here. Alexander Van de Sant got through that as well. Um, so, oh boy, we've got we've got a number of different things going on here. Um, fuel mileage, yes, that, that was what we were talking about before. Fuel mileage, um, it's going to be very, very close for these drivers to make it. I don't know that they're going to be able to make it. It's going to be, I, if I'm doing my math right, it's going to be 43 to go when the green flag flies out. The longest I've seen anyone go, I think, is a 41 or a 42 lap stint, and that's being in the draft the whole time. So this is going to be very touch and go here. I think that Guyon might be able to get away with this, um, having stayed out here, but it, it is definitely an interesting strategy to see what will go on here. I'm nervous about this. If you, if for the 08, I will say this. Of note, Barrett Rolf has stayed on lead lap after several minutes of damage repair, but... Longest scene, including the in lap 43, keep in mind. For some, Guyon was amongst those that hit that. Alexis Newsom at one point hit 44, but that was as a result of some of the cautions. And how things can fall in your lap after a terrifically horrific start. Alexis Newsom has just had everything fall back in her direction in the span of about 10 minutes. Yeah. This basically couldn't have gone better for Alexis Newsom. Um, she was a lap down. She was um, far, far out of this race. And then suddenly she gets her lap back and then gets that second caution that she needed to make her strategy work. It's fallen exactly how she needed it here. She's back in 11th place now. More importantly, back on the lead lap. And most importantly, within striking distance of uh, potentially winning this race now. 
Paul Jenkins now coming in to top off. Was amongst those pinned a lap down, two laps down in fact. Others are coming in to make sure as well. Boletska well, the third to group. Fancy Newsom Musselman wanting to play it safe as they did not have track position. They'll all start behind Barrett Rolf with the lights on top of the iRacing pace car out. So to reset, it's Guyon in the lead. He did not pit the only driver in the entire grid on the lead lap not to do so. Jeff Shields in second, followed by Teed Wagner DeMade. Then Branch, who needed a caution, got it for contact behind and touching him. Then Van de Sant, Rolf, who was involved in the big one, to Groot, Bensi, the top 10. We'll say this too. Robert Wetzke, the third with this caution, is back in it after an abysmal first two thirds of the race. Yeah, it's shaking everything up. And don't forget, we've also got those two lap cars in between the leader of Alex Gunion and second place of Jeff Siong. That's George Anzaldo, and I believe that's Christopher Kresge. Um, at the top of, the, of this field in between our, our first two drivers here. A racing pace car is off. This is the very tip of the fuel window we've seen today. Green flags out and they're scattering already. Side by side for fourth. Demay trying to cut out around Wagner. Branch now side by side. Rolf despite the side pod damage going for the charge. Van de Sense now boxed in. Really strong start from Barrett Rolf. Very surprised that he didn't get a penalty there, but I think he's probably gotten away with it, but uh, he had a really good run there. Um, it'll be interesting to see now that we get back to green just how well uh, his car handles, especially in that uh, pack there. But, oh, we've got some side-by-side -side action with Rolf. This is not what he needs here. He needs to calm it down just a little bit, I think, but... Uh, it's going to be tight going here as all of these drivers will have to go to the front as quickly as possible because they can't afford to let the leader of Alex Guyon get very far away. And it's going to be a hornet's nest here with basically P2 on back. And guess what? The two lap cars that are with Alex Guyon, they're helping him pull away to the point where they're 1.3 seconds up between first and second. Three wide as Jenkins backs out of it. That got dangerous really quick as Charles T now leads the hornet's nest. Edge of your seat action back in the pack two by two, but up front, as you say, George Anzaldo uh, and Christopher Kresge, they are helping uh, Alex Guyon get away, and they have now, I believe, broken the draft back to that pack of cars, and they are giving each other no quarter back in the pack as we almost go three wide again. That's Alexander Van Sant in the middle. Barrett Rolf uh, has dropped back to the back of this field. Joe Branch is going around on the bottom. Charles T leading it. Three wide through turns three and four. Alexander's, Alexander Van de Sant in the middle. So close with Matt Wagner there. Oh, guys, we got to calm down contact. here. We still got a lot. <laughs> Go ahead, Matt Justin. Wagner nearly got into the side pod of Van de Sant and all of that to Andrew. Now it's three wide behind him as a result. Wagner not looking like he's having fun in that number three now. Oh my goodness, that was so close to disaster, but they managed to get through it, and Alexander Van de Sant has gotten through the, the Hornet's nest of cars and he is now on the back of Charles Teed and looking to potentially um, lead this pack and hopefully lead them back towards that lead car of Alexander Guyon. Or, uh, uh, yeah, Alex Guyon. Uh, but that was so close there, near disaster for a number of our competitors and they just simply can't afford to have this happen again. Meanwhile, Alexis Newsom, she is just sitting back there smartly letting all of the, this craziness happen in front of her and I think that she's just saving her tires, saving fuel. And um, if any of these drivers can make it to the end, it's going to be through fuel mileage. And they should have been saving right from the very beginning. So if any driver here is looking to make it, I would say look for some of the cars at the back of this field, like the likes of Robert Malechka or Alexis Newsom or AJ Musselman. I think those are the cars that could potentially make it. The, these other cars, they're driving way too hard to make it on fuel from here. And that's the great point to bring up here because the first of the drivers who topped off, guess what is in fourth? Kayla Bensi. The next nearest car, Nick DeGroote, who is about a second back from Bensi currently on the racetrack. The lead pack has now been reeled in, in part because Guyon has been using George Enzoldo to save gas. Keep in mind, Enzoldo is at the tail end of the lead lap with how it's structured now. 
That has allowed everyone else to rejoin and close up a full second over the course of a couple laps. Yeah, really close stuff. I, I, I'm not sure that Guyon's best play here is to let George lead. I think that really, if he could, he, he should be trying to get in front of Anzaldo. But on the flip side, I think that Anzaldo really wants to stay in front of this pack here because if a caution does come out here, that means that he's back in this race, back on the, for the lead, lead lap. Alexander Van de Sant for the lead. Charles Teed for the lead too. Three wide down the back stretch here, Justin. Van de Sant clears on by. Van de Sant to the outside to try and drive around and Zotto can't. Guyon with the draft, Teed forced to lift. Here comes Bensi, the first of the top off drivers. Near contact for the race leader with the lap traffic. And, and Zoto gets into Van de Sant. Van de Sant saves it. Team now to the lead. Three wide for second. Oh my word, that was so close for a, yet another championship contender here, Justin. I, How I, in the world? I, I'm almost speechless here. They get so close through that corner. I don't know how Alexander Van de Sant saved that. There's already side pod damage to Enzotto. There it is. And Van Descent doesn't seem to be happy about that over the radio. It's worth noting. He is now back to fourth because of the contact. Now he's going for third. Yeah, that's definitely got a little bit of the red mist, I think, in Alexander Van Descent's uh, vision right here. Um, definitely probably doesn't appreciate, especially a lapped car. Um, having that happen, but uh, um, he's got to just sort of calm down here a little bit, Justin. Realize that he's in a really good position in this championship fight. He's got 30 laps to go in this race, and he's excellently positioned not only in the race, but with everything that's gone on in the championship as well. So he's got to really sort of refocus here and, and get back into the mode of um, being a little bit patient and then um, picking his spot towards the end of this race to really go for that front spot, I think. Keep in mind, if you're in Zodo, what's going through his mind right now, Andrew? Because again, tail in the lead lap, he needs a caution. He cannot make it to the end, has to pit within 10 laps. He is not letting any of the leaders go. In fact, is the causer of chaos almost. How about three wide for second? This is so such tent edge of your seat racing here. Van de Sant really wants to take that second spot, but um, that outside line just simply isn't letting him get clear enough to get through there but um, if I'm in Anzaldo basically what I'm thinking here is, is that I just need to stay in front of this pack no matter what because again if the caution comes out it puts him back in in the race um, it as the innocent goes up on the exit of two there just starting to lose the front and lose the tires just a little bit but um, if I'm Guyon I'm just sort of looking around me here and saying, what on the, in the world have I got myself into? But um, he's been doing a good job just staying up on the top of the, the track. Um, Keed as well ha has just been doing a good job of staying on the outside of George Anzaldo, and it's not letting any of the, the more aggressive cars sort of get a really good run on them. So it's some good management from a couple of these guys and uh, some really aggressive racing from a couple of others. 26 to go this time by meanwhile and don't look now some of the drivers who are at the top offs you have to wonder if they're going to start making the moves on four nick to group ninth position is the second car on that strategy keep in mind bensi still the first of those cars on that window here comes the send for second meanwhile though van de san getting to the bottom Again, forced to lift as Guyon up top wheels it around. How about three wide again? Two wide for the lead. A lump of the lap car as T nearly squeezes Bensi to the fence. Oh, we've seen that come up disastrous in a number of occasions so far today, Justin. And that was nearly another one. But uh, fortunately, Caleb Bensi did back out there just enough. And we avoided disaster one more time. Uh, <laughs> this, this is some edge of your seat racing here and I, I will say that while I understand what George Anzaldo is doing he is not making any friends here at the front of this field I'm sure that um, the three drivers 
right directly behind him are um, trying to figure out a way to get by and, and get around him so that um, he, he doesn't uh, cause a, a, any issues for them but it, it's been <laughs> it's been some really tight racing and, and just having yeah. that car on the inside has been um, causing a few issues but it does sound like George Anzaldo is going to be coming down pit road this time by Justin so he'll give up the ghost the question is did everyone hear the message and Zoto already dropping to the fourth car now overall in line there's the big drop off in really patient and really early on the apron this time to move out of the way so there goes the traffic that has allowed Bensi to leapfrog to the race lead with 23 laps to go and now let the fuel mileage games commence even more so. Guyon's approaching his 32nd lap. A majority on their 24th coming to 25. The top off drivers on their 23rd this time. Yeah, and, and the games have already begun, I want to say, Justin, as well. Because look at Barrett Rolf. He's the only one of those cars that topped off that's really been dropping back. So he is going all out on this fuel strategy. I don't know whether he's going to be able to make it at this point, but... Um, he, he is all in on that fuel strategy. He is 4.6 seconds back of the race lead, three seconds back of AJ Musselman, who's the next car up on, on that strategy. So, um, I if anyone damage, can make it, it, um, uh, oh yeah, that could be his damage as well. So yeah, yeah it'll, it'll be interesting. Go ahead. Very interesting in that result. And Essentially, that may be the only hope for Rolf with how this is playing out, depending on how things shake up to gain a lot of valuable points. New race leader, Van de Sand, in through turn three and four. But now, with 19 to go, tick-tock, time to look at those fuel gauges. And I just don't know if any of these drivers can actually make it here. Again, it's going to be a real, real stretch for a lot of these drivers to make it. You can do it, you can save fuel, but of course these cars um, in with the DW12, Justin, they don't have the benefit of in-car tools either. So in the IR18, you can uh, dial up the fuel maps, dial, dial them back and, and save a lot of fuel that way. Um, but in these cars, it's all with your right foot. So it'll be really interesting to see if any of these cars um, can make it as we see Barrett Rolf has given up the ghost in fact and he is down on pit road so that damage is just not letting him save enough fuel here he is uh, pitting right now hear that in the backdrop that's the siren saying the choo-choo train is leaving the station for the potential points on the line Barrett Rolf losing a lot of points as a result of that likely by the end of the night but meanwhile under 17 laps to go Van de Sant trying to play the different lines with Bensi now trying to find any point to save a round. Charles T though keeping the aggression levels up with Jeff Sheon and company staying in the middle line. Yeah, and it, now that Enzaldo is out of there, Justin, it does look a little bit more orderly up front, doesn't it? There is some battling still. There is some side-by-side -side action, but not nearly the action that we were having earlier on in the stint. I think that Van de Sant is doing a really good job up front uh, similar to what Tony Shallon was doing earlier in the race, he's really controlling sort of both lines with, with uh, Caleb Bensi and Charles Teed and uh, really not letting them get those same runs that they had been getting earlier on in the race. Um, as we see Bensi looking to the outside but not really in a position to actually make that move stick. So um, the interesting thing here though is I think that by leading here, Van de Sand has basically counted himself out of any hope of making it on fuel and most of these front cars um, have as well but back in that pack just a little bit further 10th and 11th place Alexis Newsom, Robert Malechka the third they are, are still hanging around hanging in this draft and I'm really curious to see what they'll make it because I it's would be such a Herculean feat for them to make it but if they can do it they might just steal a win away from the likes of, of Van de Sand or Caleb Bensi at this point and here's the big thing to consider too Depending on how things play out for Bensi with how aggressive he's been up towards the front. If, say, that 29 has to come on down, guess who likely, along with whoever can't also make it, cycles towards the point, the 91. But here's the thing, Nick DeGroote's not making it easy either amongst the factory back machines who are all staying in, in the line. Remember, Molechka the third, for him to have any realistic shot for the finale, needs a victory today. That was the main thought process where he mentioned 
after the race, after having travel issues on the way back from the state of Texas before the Richmond race was, I think I'm up for the challenge essentially is what he said, Andrew. And now he's on the charge. He wants to be up in the front now. Yeah, he's really moving towards the front of this field. The other benefit of saving that fuel early on in that stint for Malechka and Newsom is that they have much they've taken care of their tires much better than a lot of these drivers up front who were really really aggressive throughout that early part of the stint so i'm not sure if this is a sign from malechka the third that they can't really make it on fuel but regardless he is going straight to the front here keep in mind even with this malechka the third is still not within the top six he's still in seven based on the drop but a lot is going to potentially happen with 10 laps to go from kansas especially with them now in the battle for the lead, how about two by two, several rolls deep? Kayla Bensey to the point, with Vandersen having to check up. Teed drives to the middle line, now to the bottom. Teed with a great run to take the point back. Nice move there from Teed, and it does look like um, Vandersen potentially might be setting up a, a pit stop here in the next few laps because that was all too easy for Teed and Bensey to get by Vandersen. Um, so it might be a sign that um, these pit stops, if they're going to happen, they're going to have to happen soon. I think that it's probably better to come in sooner rather than later in, in terms of these stints because you want to have at least a few laps under green flag conditions to really get your momentum back and try and lay down some scorching laps to maybe leapfrog a few people in this pit cycle. Look who's pulling away from the rest of the pack though. Charles Teed, he has put on the loud pedal and brought Dakota to made with him. Everyone else is running 202, 204 in the corner. The others, how about 5, 10 miles per hour quicker on corner exit. Approaching 7 to go this time. No signals yet, but Guyon has come down. So his window has closed. Who else will not make it towards the end? The furthest the driver has gone this run, 45 laps. That was Guyon. And here comes Alexis Newsom. She was patient throughout this entire run, Justin, and look at her now. She is up into fifth place right behind her teammate, and it looks like if any drivers have the fuel to make this work, it would be those two factory-backed cars. Charles Teed now has a problem. He's now backing down. Demade leads that time by. Now down to six laps to go as Demade leads for the third time around tonight. Now Teed slides up. Near contact from Lechka the third as he brings Newsom with him. Oh, that was so close. Uh, I'm sure that Robert Malechka had a little bit of a minor heart attack there. But he is on the charge here, and Charles Teed is not going to slow him down. He's already looking for second place across the start-finish line. And just like that, Jeff Xiong is in the rearview mirror. These factory-backed cars are on the charge. Five to go. Coming up four to go. Newsom looking to leapfrog for third. Moletka to the third, looking for the run to take the lead. Demade running the bottom. Moletka to the third, arcing it down. Remember, the drivers can use the apron only on the final lap. That may become a factor depending on how things play out here in the final four plus laps. Yeah, that apron is definitely going to be a factor on the, the final laps. Um, as we, There's we block. Saw, there's a little bit of a block there. You're right, Justin. Um, he, uh, Dakota Demade definitely does not want Malechka the third to have that run, but I don't think that there's very much that he can do at this point to stop the run of Malechka the third as a nice crossover move from Malechka the third and on the inside, and just like that, it looks like Malechka the third is going to take the lead of this race. Not giving up though is Demade. Coming up to two laps to go. Three one as Newsom takes the bottom. What Demade. a move from Newsom. Demade squeezes down. Malechka the third forced to check up. Dakota Demade, the rookie, leads with two to go. What action we have here, Justin. The two factory back cars versus the rookie Dakota Demade. And Dakota is doing everything he can to keep those two cars behind him. But Alexis Newsom on the inside now. It does look like she might just clear Dakota Demade through this corner. But will she be able to keep it on the inside? And will Demade be able to draft back up? alongside with just one lap to go take it away justin final lap from kansas speedway alexis newsom looking for another victory in a row demade looking for his first contact 
Balatka to third tries by. Hard contact for Demade and Newsom to the inside wall. Molechka to the third and Jeff Shion are now racing to the checkered flag. The final corner, Robert Molechka to third, recovers from damage to win at Kansas. He's the winner of the Fish Motors Kansas 200, presented by Espo Designs. Can you believe it? I, for not the first time today, Justin, I am speechless from that last lap. I can't believe what we just witnessed. Alexis Newsom, Dakota DeMade, Newsom uh, slides up in front of DeMade on that uh, corner. It looks like she just let up off the throttle trying to keep out of the, the uh, outside wall. Dakota DeMade just didn't anticipate just how much Newsom would be letting up. Gets into the back of Newsom and they both end up in the inside wall. But the story of today those two factory back cards, and particularly Robert Malechka III, we talked about it right from the opening. He needed to win this race, and look at what he's done today, Justin. Unbelievable. Just one lap led, and it was the most important one. He's your winner from Kansas in the Fish Motors Kansas 200, presented by Espo Designs. In a moment, he needed a win. Now... It's going to be interesting how things play out from here for the finale as we take a look at your Carnox race results. The difference, three-tenths of a second with Jeff Shion finishing in second. Matt Wagner finishes in third for Dark Horse Motorsports, while Joe Branch for Adrenaline Motorsports gives his team some good points for the team title. AJ Musselman, he was quiet all race, finishes in fifth with Nick DeGroote in sixth. Alexander Van de Sant finishes in seventh with Caleb Bensey in eighth. Alexis Newsom, the last car in the lead lap, finished in ninth. Dakota DeMade did not make it to the checkered flag. 11th goes to Charles Teed. He had to pit with about five laps to go. Alex Gunion pit with about 10 to go. Barrett Rolf, after significant damage, pit with 15 laps to go, with Paul Jenkins two laps down, 14. George Anzotto's in 15th. Chris Presky's 16th. Gary Gonsal 17th. Chris Fowler 18th with Trevor Malone and Matt Houston, your top 20. Now Malone, Houston leading the DNF list along with Matt Taylor, Tony Shawin. Huge implications from that incident with 55 to go. Dean Maul, after early contact, also ends the race in the paddock. Tower Graf, a lot to discuss in race control. That brings us towards what's going to be a very wild next few days and next few weeks of preparation. This is the look of the live points with the drops factory and currently Newsom. Currently hold on to the point for now, Andrew. Yeah, fortunately for Newsom, because they she had taken the white flag and there were a number of cars that had to pit, it it did really limit the damage that she suffered in that last lap incident with uh with Dakota DeMade. But um we saw that this was the the race that a number of these drivers had an opportunity to really make a stamp on the championship on, but none of them really did. So what we are going to see is that a knockdown drag out fight in two weeks at Auto Club and anyone in the top seven still has a mathematical shot at winning this championship. So it should be a fantastic finale, Justin. That now brings us into our HyperX post-race show because the Lionheart Racing Series is powered by HyperX. It's a premier gaming gear like the legendary Ultra Comfortable Cloud line of gaming headsets. Whatever you play, however you play, HyperX knows we're all gamers. For more information on HyperX products, visit HyperX.com and don't forget to use the promo code LIONHRT15 for 15% off orders. Let's dive straight into a wild HyperX victory lane. One lap led, no problem for Robert Malachka III from having contact before the green flag even waved to victory lane, Robert. Talk us through that final lap, first of all, because that was crazy. Yeah, um, I mean, really, it starts with, uh, what, four or five to go? Maybe seven to go. Um, I knew I was good. Alexis was really close, and I'm basically out of the championship. So, really, it's just, as a team, get her as many points as possible to uh, win the cham championship. But, yeah, I think we started going with the seven, eight to go. Um, we got up to second and third. Um uh, I think I had Dakota on the outside, and I told Alexis to go three to possibly get her lead or at least get her uh, in a nice position to get a run down the front straight. Um, it worked out well. Um, unfortunately, you know, contact happened there between those two. But uh, yeah, uh, you know, 
take the win. You know, don't really need it, but um, it's always great to get to win this series with some pretty good drivers. Well, you mentioned it when watching alone after missing the last start that you needed to win out in their step one part from there, but it wasn't looking promising early. Talk yeah. us through your, what was going through your mind early, especially when you're on the grid, someone backs up, boom, into your front wing. Yeah, um, not ideal, you know. Uh, would prefer if that would not not happen, but uh, I knew from the practice races, you know, if you, you know, tap someone in the rear or hit the wall 15 times, uh, you, you actually don't lose that much speed in the draft. So I knew I was okay to keep up, um, got their wing changed, and uh, just kept clicking off qualifying laps. Um, you know, got a, got a good break with cautions. Um, and yeah, somehow, uh, <laughs> somehow worked there uh, for myself in the end. Now you mentioned, in your opinion, you're out of the fight in the realistic sense, but a lot can happen with the double points paying race to end off the season and the triple crown race. Your thoughts for Auto Club, 150 laps for the board when we go there in a couple weeks time. Yeah, you know, it should be another, you know, exciting race uh, that the Lionheart Speedway Series produces every, uh, you know, week in and week out. Um, I'm sure Andrew here will have a, an elite setup for us as always. Um, hopefully, you know, we can put on a show, but at least for me, um, we'll see how the, you know, the points shake out. If there's any, you know, any people get caught out uh, early in that race, but if not, then it's full, you know, teammate mode, get Alexis uh, the best finish as possible, um, help her out and try to get her to the championship. Thank you very much for your time. Congratulations on the victory. It's your sixth of the season, by the way. Well, we'll see if we can get seven uh, and carry the momentum to next year. Robert Much to the third was one of the wildest drives you'll see. From 21st to 1st, only one lead lap. The driver who followed up right behind him was Jeff Shion. Jeff, what was your viewpoint for that final lap and the final couple laps of craziness? Um, I was just looking at that fuel gauge and trying to make sure that I got across the line somewhere in that top three. How close were you then on the gas with that, especially with our drivers starting to just zip on by who were amongst the top off group? Everybody that topped off, we kind of looked at that there as a team and we were talking about it and it was just, they had the extra feel. I didn't, I started sputtering off of turn four right there at the end and kind of looked in the mirror and it's like, okay, I'm kind of safe for P2. But yeah, it was definitely close. Everybody started pushing really hard and I didn't want to lose track position there at the end. So I just played the gamble and it worked out perfect. Now for you, you entered tonight inside the top 12 in points. A very solid finish to try and gain some more for a potential top 10 run here towards the end of the season. What's your approach now for the final finale? Um, try and get some practice in, qualify as good as possible, and put the car back on the podium, I hope. Very simple strategy. Congratulations to the run. Hey, thanks, guys. Jeff Shion finishes second tonight, one of his better runs of the season. In fact, his second top five old campaign. For Matt Wagner, meanwhile, a third place run. His first top five the whole season. Matt Wagner's previous best finish, entry tonight 20th of points, was for him a ninth at Indianapolis. Matt, were you expecting this tonight? Why or why not? Oh, I was, uh, we were expecting it too, that uh, that last call should come out. Uh, me and Jeff were teammates, and uh, we were talking things through the night. Um, <laughs> it was it was so much fun, and uh, our strategy was to uh, see if we can uh, save enough fuel. And he barely made it across the line, and I had about a lap to the good. And um, I was trapped behind Alex, which was desperately trying to get on the pit road, and. Uh, I forced me so far back, I knew I didn't have a shot, so I was just hoping and praying that that's all I can say, but it was a lot of fun. I enjoyed it. So with that, you mentioned some of the mistakes that popped up. What would you have done differently if you've had the second chance to try and have a shot there? I wouldn't have done anything differently. If, <laughs> if Alex wasn't in front of me, I probably would have had a shot at the win. Desperately, I I would have been my first line heart win, and I would have been so excited. I was great on fuel. So on that note, then there's one more race to go. Your approach for the finale. 
at Auto Club. I just one of my better i racing tracks. Uh, I've got a lot of wins there. Um, I'm pretty confident going to the Auto Club. Um, let's see if we can get it done. I'll be on a mission trying to get my win here. Congratulations on the podium. Congratulations on your best run of the season, Matt. Uh, thank you, buddy. I really appreciate it. That's Matt Wagner. You can hear the disappointment in his voice there. I'd like to thank him, Jeff Sheehan, Robert Lester III, for taking the time to speak with us during the Hypo Folks Race Show. Now, here's a look at the schedule. And then there was one, Andrew. Double points. The final Triple Crown. The final race of the season. It's Auto Club. 300 miles, 150 laps to crown a champion. It all comes down to one final race, and incredibly, we still have seven drivers mathematically alive in this championship fight. Auto Club has been known both in iRacing and in the real world to produce some fantastic racing with this car. With double points on the line, the stakes couldn't be higher. I can't wait for two weeks from now, Justin. An absolutely stunning end to the mile and a half run for 2021 season. Question's going to be on everyone's minds. How will things fare out in California? On that note, it's time to take the time to thank the sponsors. For tonight's action, first, the tunnel sponsor of the Speedway Series, the DMLC Racing Channel. Looking for entertaining sim racing content? Then look no further. Full fall former Lionheart Retro Series Driver of the Year, Mark Cohn's racing escapades as he battles for wins and avoids wrecks with cat-like reflexes. All while providing commentary sure to make you laugh, cry, or both. Follow along by subscribing to the DMLC Racing Channel on YouTube, like his Facebook page at the DMLC Racing Channel. The Lionheart Racing Series is powered by HyperX, maker of Supreme Gaming Gear, like the legendary ultra comfortable Cloud Line of Gaming Headsets. Whatever you play, however you play, HyperX knows for all gamers. For more information on HyperX products, visit HyperX.com and don't forget to use the promo code LionHRT15 for 15% off orders. The Sim Experience AccuForce Pro V2 is the premier professional simulation racing steering system. Key to its incredible realism is the groundbreaking direct drive or control system, providing a driving experience that's second only to the real thing. For more information on the entire Sim Experience ecosystem, visit SimExperience.com. For Sim Racers, the Butt Kicker Gamer Tour Simulation Kit has the missing driver to car connection. Bring more realism to your sessions. By accurate responding to in-game audio, you can feel the track like never before, providing increased vehicle handling and faster lap times. Are you ready for the most immersive experience in sim racing? And for more information, visit thebuckkicker.com and don't forget to use the promo code LION2021 for 20% off orders. Minus 273 is the premier name in carding gloves. French wheeling gloves are super lightweight and durable, made to breathe by Spendex. Whether you're a kart or sim racer, Minus 273 gives you the control to reach Victory Lane. For more info on Minus 273's full line of gloves and apparel, minus 273.biz and don't forget to also use Minus 273LHRS15 for 15% off orders. And it's not just those five names, but so many more. And all of the partners at the Lionheart Racing Series that help things function. To learn more about them, visit LionheartRacingSeries.com. You can find out more information on the three competitions Lionheart sanctioning body runs. Lots of more Lionheart competition is to come. To follow along with the action, make sure to keep up with Lionheart action on social media at Lionheart Series. You can also follow along with ESTV for all your esports needs. The race spot has your V Motorsports action covered. Be sure to follow along on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and more. Be sure to hit the YouTube subscribe button and the notification bell as well to keep up with the racing action we get to cover. The next time the Lionheart Racing Series hits the track is this Wednesday for the IndyCar Series. That is when they visit the Motor City for the Elkin Tech Simulation Grand Prix of Detroit. That takes place November 17th, 10.35 p.m. Eastern, 7.35 p.m. Pacific. Next time the Speedway Series hits is for the final race of its season, a Triple Crown race, November 29th. You catch that on Racebond TV and ESTV. But with that, it's time to say goodbye. For Arjuna Kankipani and, and Andrew Kinsella, my name's Justin Brintz. Thank you so much for watching tonight's action on Racebot TV and ESTV. 
from Kansas. Congratulations to Robert Munchkin III, your winner from Kansas City.